Hello students, so in the previous class uh, we learned about massed uh, asymptotic expansion and uh, we also saw that how do we um, obtain the uh, solution in a way using the asymptotic expansion. Uh, we will continue our discussion on stiff differential equation and uh, today I will uh, introduce these um, uh, the concept of stiff differential equation and uh, further theories uh, related to that. All right, so let us continue. So, to begin with, um, so basically uh, we are going to talk about stiff differential equation, right. Um, so, let us consider basically, uh, let us consider uh, the model equation, basic, uh, the model equation of this type equation, uh, model equation of the type uh, epsilon x dot equals to minus of x plus b t. So, here we are, uh, um, here we are omitting this epsilon uh, super, superscript, here we are omitting epsilon superscript, okay. So, nothing to worry, but uh, it is the same equation that we had in the previous class. So, let us uh, call it as equation number 1. Now, we can um, put this OD, we can put uh, this ODE into uh, standard form, standard form by multiplying. So, since you have epsilon x dot, uh, we want to put it in the standard form as uh, dx dt equals to something, right. So, by multiplying uh, lambda equals to minus 1 by epsilon uh, on both sides, on both sides, okay. So, what will happen? It will become uh, minus of x dot equals to x by epsilon minus b t by epsilon. So, we can write it as uh, x dot equals to 1 by epsilon, uh, 1 by epsilon x minus or uh, minus 1 by epsilon x minus uh, b t. So, basically this is lambda x minus b t. Let us call it as equation number so, note now, uh, um, note that, note that uh, mod of lambda which is equals to basically 1 by epsilon. So, as epsilon is a very, very small number, right, uh, it is close to 0, but not actually 0. So, then mod of lambda is very large. So, note that uh, mod of lambda which is equals to 1 by epsilon is very large, is very large and uh, of course, lambda is less than 0. So, from here we can see that lambda is less than 0 because epsilon is positive. So, obviously, minus 1 by it, it is a negative quantity, but a very large negative quantity and mod of lambda is a large positive quantity is very large now. Okay. So, if we, um, if we uh, discretize, discre ties uh, 2 by Euler forward difference method. I think you must be aware of this uh, forward difference method with a step size h with a step size h then we have um, x i plus 1 h equals to 1 plus h lambda x i minus lambda h b i or uh, b at t i. So, not b at t i, right. So, this is our numerical scheme. So, if you discretize, then basically what will happen is you will have uh, 
uh, x i plus 1 minus f x i by this uh, um, h equals to we um, will have uh, this um, this x i at uh, h uh, minus of b at t i. So, x i plus 1 is basically x at t i plus 1 and so on. So, uh, when you do the cross multiplication uh, we will end up getting this type of uh, numerical scheme. So, let us call it as uh, equation number 1, 2 uh, and 3. So, now uh, we will consider a small uh, calculation and we will see what do we uh, what do we get from here. So, let us go to the next page. So, consider uh, consider lambda equals to minus 100 and uh, B t equals to uh, 0.99 e to the power minus t in equation 2. And uh, if we choose initially, if we choose um, x 0 equals to 1, uh, we obtain. So, getting the solution will be very uh, straightforward. So, what, what do we have is we obtain. So, we have d x d t equals to um, uh, d x d t equals to lambda is minus 100. Uh, lambda is minus 100, then x minus b t is uh, 0.99 e to the power minus of t, right. And uh, if from here this is basically uh, x dot equals to, uh, x dot plus uh, we'll get plus 100 x equals to uh, 99 um, e to the power minus of t and uh, basically if we try to solve it this is our first order od so from here you can get the um, integrating factor and uh, from there we can write down the solution and uh, if we use this uh, initial condition x0 equals to 1 i believe the final solution will be xt equals to e to the power minus of t right so basically um, the from a singular from a singular uh, perturbation perturbation point of view point of view um, we see that we see that we see that um, we see that this solution this solution is close to the solution of the reduced equation isn't it because for the reduced equation you let epsilon go to 0 uh, since uh, reduced equation i e when you let epsilon go to 0 in your original equation then it will become um, um, x equals to b t and uh, x t equals to b t basically and uh, this will imply that x t equals to uh, 0.99 e to the power minus of t right. So, here you have 1 here we have 0.99 so very close to one another. So, and it only differs and uh, it only differs by uh, you can take the difference uh, so 0 0.01 or by uh, order of epsilon. So, epsilon is a very small number. So, we say that it is only differ by order of epsilon. So, with this uh, particular example, if we put um, the certain values of lambda and b t, so we can see that uh, the differential equation that we initially started with their solution, uh, the, the solution of that equation and the solution of the reduced equation, that is pretty much same or almost similar. So, now if we do the Euler's uh, uh, forward method. So, by taking let us go back to the previous numerical scheme. So, if we take um, let let us take uh, 
h equals to 0 0.05, 0 0.05, then t is equals to 0, t i equals to 0, x i at h, then x at t i, then similarly e h i and uh, e h i by x t of i. So, when you compute all these values, so when T i is 0, uh, X i that is uh, the initial value, then we have X at T i is also 1 and uh, E h i will be 0 and uh, this ratio, this one is also 0. Okay. Now, when uh, T i is uh, point 0.1, so then in that case, this will be um, 0 0.9085, then this will be 0 0.90483, uh, then this one will be 0 0.0037 and this one will be 0 0.0041. Similarly, we can compute all these nodal values and uh, let us keep on going. So, when this one is uh, uh, 1, so this will be 2. Point 7 times 10 to the power 8, this one will be 0.367, this value will be 2.7 into eight, uh, 10 to the power, sorry, 10 to the power 8 and this value will be 7.4, 7 7.4, 10 to the power 8, right. So, we can compute all these values. So, sim and uh, uh, similarly, we can get uh, if you take h equals to, so this here we have taken h equals to 0 0.5, you can also take h equals to, uh, let us go to the next page, uh, h equals to uh, 0 0.00625 and we can compute T i x i h x at T i then uh, E h i and then ratio of E h i x at t i. So, here again uh, when t i is 0, x i h is, uh, x i h is given by 1 initially, right. This one is 1, this one is 0, this one is 0. Then we have when this one is 0 0.1, then this will be 0 0.9048, this one is 0 0.9043. Um, then this one is point zero 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 two nine, and uh, then we have point zero 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 three one. Similarly, we can compute the other values. When this is one, then this will be point three six seven. This will be point three six seven eight. Uh, here also we have eight. Then this value will be zero 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 one two. And this value will be 0 0.000031, right? So that is uh, the numerical results that we are getting from the table. So we can write uh, the results, the numerical results, the numerical results from the previous tables are not so strange, are not so strange. Why? Not so strange in because indeed, indeed uh, by noticing that the homogeneous part of 3, the homogeneous part of 3 generates uh, solutions uh, growing geometrically going growing geometrically like geometrically like 1 minus 100 h to the power i and uh, it follows that it follows that the recursion recursion uh, sorry the recursion only one s 
the recursion uh, 3 is numerically unstable, is numerically unstable for h greater than 0 0.02. And uh, similarly, uh, if uh, we wish to uh, emphasize, we wish to emphasize that um, if we essentially let h approach to 0, uh, 0 and set e to the power h lambda or lambda h equals to 1 plus h lambda where h is going towards uh, h is going towards 0 and let this equals to 0 euler's forward method euler forward method is also not proper method for singularly perturbed problems, right. So, for singularly perturbed problems, when we have an, uh, when we have these numerically uh, discretized schemes, um, if our for this particular problem, we saw that if our step length is greater than 0 0.02, then in that case, the uh, the problem is no longer stable, right? So it tells us that for even for uh, simple uh, uh, singularly perturb, uh, perturbed problems, our Euler method which we basically use for first order ODEs and, and all that, uh, it is it's no longer uh, a proper method or it is not suitable for doing the numerical um, analysis for these uh, type of singularly perturbed problems. Now, um, and uh, now uh, one may consider so problems as the as the consideration as the consideration considerations uh, above simply generalizes 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 uh, to more complex od complex od the essential point here the essential point here is the existence of at least two time scales at least two time scales right if one is interested in approximate so interested in uh, approximating in approximating approximating outer solutions which we defined yesterday outer uh, or in the previous class outer solutions um, that is uh, the ones with larger time uh, time scales uh, Euler forward uh, still has to comply with the stability requirement, with the stability requirement imposed by imposed by 
the smaller time scale. Smaller time scale, and thus uh, needs unduly many grids. many grid points and this is the problem here and this undesired undesired condition condition is not available in the Euler's forward method condition on step size on the step size is not present is not present in Euler scheme, right? Now, this type of uh, numerical, um, how to say, anomaly in a way that this uh, singularly perturbed problem that is throwing at us has a terminology. It's called a stiffness, right? So the numerical, the numerical terminology terminology uh, for the phenomena above for the phenomena above is the celebrated notion of stiffness notion of stiffness Right, so that's what we mean by basically uh, the stiffness uh, of a singularly perturbed um, differential equation. All right. Now, uh, let us consider. Uh, we uh, we like to use uh, so we like to use to use it in the sense. So this stiffness, what do we mean by this stiffness? In the sense that the dominant time, that the dominant time scale is different, is different from a faster time scale, a faster time scale present in the problem, present in the, in the problem, right. Now for linear problems, um, for linear problems, for linear problems, we may say it slightly more precisely, slightly more precisely. So for linear problems, we would like to define it a uh, little bit precise manner. So for that, let us consider, so we consider uh, x dot equals to a x plus r t, right. When we say linear problem, that means it should be linear with respect to x. Um, so you have dx dt uh, equals to so still first order and uh, uh, linear in x, right? So dx dt equals to a times a is a can be a matrix uh, x plus r t, right? And uh, this one is our equation number. Um, I lost the count, so maybe equation number five. If I call that x t equals to e to the power t as four, so this is equation number five. So let rho A be the spectral radius of A, spectral radius of A, and then the OD, then the OD uh, pi is stiff, is stiff on an interval. on an interval let's say 
T1 to T2. T1, T2 is the time interval representing the, this interval represents the uh, time interval basically and T1, T2 are two different time scales, right? So, T1, T2, if mod of rho A times T2 minus T1 is greater than 1. Now, this definition, uh, let us call it as definition, I do not know, or equation 6. So, the, def the definition 6, the definition 6 um, reflects the delicate relation delicate relation between the relevant time scales, the relevant uh, length of the uh, interval and time scale and the time scale. Right. All right. Uh, so basically, um, this is the definition that uh, I was uh, talking about about the stiffness of this uh, linear differential equation. Uh, so if rho a represents the spectral radius of the operator a, uh, then O d, uh, the linear O d that we have written, uh, it's called stiff. Uh, if this particular condition holds true, right? So here, um, uh, this definition shows how we can we are connecting the spectral radius um, or the relevant uh, interval and the time scale right so um, the spectral radius definition can be found in any standard book um, it has something to do with um, eigen values and uh, the the given operator a or the matrix a so we uh, uh, tried to see uh, what do we mean by stiff differential equation and uh, from the numerical example of course uh, we chose a very simple example uh, uh, with the numerical example, we try to understand the analogy or uh, the relation between our usual numerical scheme for uh, ordinary differential equation and for the st stiff differential equation or singularly perturbed problem. And we saw that uh, this Euler method that we usually use for um, um, ordinary differential equation, it may work for, uh, for our um, uh, this uh, non perturbed problems, but when you have this singularly perturbed problems, uh, we learned that uh, our usual Euler scheme uh, um, forward or backward scheme, it does not work. And uh, that is happening because there is a stiffness, uh, stiffness in the sense you have two different time scales in the problem that is creating the uh, issue for uh, getting this um, uh, Euler forward scheme or backward scheme to work here. Right. So, we will continue this, uh, this discussion in our uh, next class and uh, we will learn about some more terminology, some more methods uh, related to uh, uh, stiff differential equation and I uh, will show you uh, further uh, topics like uh, A alpha stability and all that. So, I uh, hope to see you in the next class and uh, bye for now.